You can learn a lot of interesting things watching horror movies. For example, this taught me that if I find a large vehicle with very sharp blades moving and they're directed towards me, I should stand in front of it and remain relatively still for several seconds. The people in this movie seriously needed to stop going off by themselves, leaving the house to explore a light source on the outside. Every single time someone did, something happened back at the house or you heard a scream or something. When one of the crazies is going around with that pitchfork and, you know, stabbing women who are strapped down, when Rada Mitchell's character, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, yelled, hey, or something, and he turned his attention towards her, was I the only one who, for just one single second, thought, once he gets over to her, if the other one shouts, he'll turn around and they can just keep it going. It was quite impeccably planned how apparently only a single soldier fired a gun at at least the baseball kid. I don't remember if his mother was also shot by just one. I think she was. And it wasn't the same one. I mean, it was like there was a guy monitoring them all saying, okay, unit 367, you fire now, and now... Seriously, were they keeping score? Always remember, if you're a crazy and nothing stands between you and freedom but a chain link fence, then you should not, under any circumstances, try to knock over this fence, even though there are plenty of you, until a car drives through another section of fence. I think it drove through a section of fence. Anyway, I mean, it wasn't the same bit of fence. I thought it was nice, disturbing detail how when we see the hunters for the second time, they're, you know, hunting people. And they're still, you know, methodical and doing it with glee. About the soldiers, I did like that they took the trouble to humanize them by letting one of them... Even though the line, I didn't sign up to shoot civilians, is getting to be a cliché. On the subject of clichés, you know what else is? It was the government that did it! We've heard that before. I'm quite sure I've seen a movie that's more than 10 years old by now that had a twist of, you know, we made it. And you know, not in the we made it kind of way, but in the we made it kind of way. And one more thing about cliches. The nuke. You knew I had to bring it up. Don't get me wrong. It's the most effective and the most stunning looking that I've seen in a recent movie, you know, since maybe T2 or something. But if I had to venture a guess, I'd say that's because both Resident Evil Apocalypse and Alien vs. Predator Requiem were pieces of shit, directed by people who have no business directing. I mean. Don't even get me started on the blurry vision zombies to cut costs for makeup effects and shit. Dude, it's a zombie movie. We paid to watch zombies. Anyway, part of my reaction to the nuke in this, as with the nuke in Alien vs. Predator Requiem, was yes, but I kind of more buy that behavior from Umbrella. I haven't actually played very much Resident Evil, but I get the pretty strong vibe that Umbrella, kind of an asshole corporation. Them, I can see nuking people to cover, but in Requiem, it was either the military or the Yutani Corporation, and we're kind of screwed if the Yutani Corporation's got that kind of leverage, and yes, I know they don't exist. And in this, too, it was the military. Would they really use an atom bomb just to ensure that this community of about 1,200 people, mind you, if I remember correctly, somewhere in that ballpark, wouldn't spread this virus? It does seem a little excessive. I think the ending worked out pretty well overall, with it seeming to spread. With that said, that little news clip a little bit into the end credits. That's probably the lamest of those I've ever seen. Anyway, I like that we didn't learn all the answers, and while this is by no means the first movie where we don't get to know everything about what the military knows and what they're up to and all that, I thought it worked pretty well. 
I love the bit near the end where the wife character totally owns the dude. I don't remember if it was maybe one of the hunters in the car. He thinks she's, you know, gone out the other door of the truck and then, you know, we just see her sitting there and blasts him away. The little spinning saw thing was also very cool and just went straight for his crotch. And I loved, you know, the hand getting stabbed and then he slowly gets it out and jams it into her throat, neck, whatever. That was really cool. And all the shots where you sort of see a crazy, a little bit off in the background and the character doesn't notice. I like the time where she's, you know, with the water bottle and then she walks off and then she walks back and then the crazy... I mean, I'll grant you, it's been done before, but fuck, it works. You know, in general, it delivers. In my book, you don't have to bring something new to the table if you can genuinely deliver something good within the boundaries of, you know, how far other people have tread off the beaten path. One final thing. Fire was very eager in this movie, wasn't it? Okay, I can maybe buy that, you know, the match and it would burn pretty quickly because we did just see him pour gasoline. But then at the end, when Timothy Oliphant puts down the lighter, I mean, it literally just exactly starts burning his foot and then a second later, the man is entirely engulfed in flames. I mean, don't get me wrong, a full body burn is a very effective visual. It just felt like it happened entirely because they wanted it to happen. I mean, maybe just add a line of dialogue, have the actor come in and dub over something like, I should have listened when my wife told me these kerosene baths would kill me one day. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the crazies. And remember, if a crazy has sewn your mouth shut and you want to warn the guy who's now, you know, cutting it open, enabling you to speak, don't use your eyes to warn him. Wait until he's cut it open so that you can speak and then just utter two words behind you. See you next time.